Welcome to another video. In this video we're going to be replacing the master cylinder. This is a 99 540i 6 speed. Um, but pretty much BMWs in this year range are all similar or the same. The first a little bit of information. Um, you can find these master cylinders on eBay and stuff like that. 60 70 dollars but my recommendation is unless you enjoy changing them don't buy one like that get a reputable brand this is a trw it's a reputable aftermarket dealer or get one from bmw and you know do it one time so we're going to go through the whole process we're going to change the master cylinder we're going to bleed out the brakes um it's a good time you know i'm gonna bleed out all the old fluid it's a good time to put all fresh nice new fluid in there and take care of that uh the first thing you got to do of course is remove your cover whatever it is it's a cabin air filter on this one uh the nice thing about bmws if you can see in there because it's covered everything's real nice and clean and not corroded up so hopefully the bolts and the lines come loose very easy that's I know a problem with a lot of cars especially you figure this is 20 years old over and the lines are nice and clean you go to a typical car that's out in the engine bay 20 years old and you can have the fight of your life getting those lines loose but at any rate um, we're going to go ahead and the first thing you got to do you can unplug your cap take your cap off and move it out of the way shove the wire back somewhere now this one also has because it's a six speed it uses the same reservoir for your clutch slave cylinder so we'll have to bleed that out too but you'll see that's not hard to do if you have an automatic you know you probably don't have this hose here and we are reusing our reservoir you can get them with or without reservoirs but you know it, the reservoir is in good shape there's no reason you can't use it but the reservoir just if you can see down there just has two has a clip on each side to hold it on and then it just pushes down in these two little holes so the first thing we got to do is remove that reservoir and you want to stick a pan or something underneath of it because the fluid will a certain amount of fluid will come out and also brake fluid eats paint so you got to be careful not to get any brake fluid on your paint itself and after you're done you'll want to wash out the inside where it's at because it will eat through the paint and cause rust so at any rate we're going to go ahead and take the reservoir off plastic reservoir like I say you just take those little clips pull those little clips and pull it straight out we're going to do that first and then we're going to move on to see what else we got okay so we got it out one thing I forgot to mention it goes in like this there's this little hose right there you can see where it went on and usually they put these little factory clamps on there um generally i just take a big pair of pliers and smash them and it'll loosen all up enough to come loose but you have to put a new hose clamp on that when you put it back together <coughs> um the back you can see the clip there the back clip is a little bit difficult to get to and what I generally do you can buy a set of these like seven eight dollars and it's got a twisty under on it if you stick that in there you can pull the clip out and then it will take some force you got to wiggle it back and forth the front one you can reach but the back one's a little bit difficult to get lift loose so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to break all the lines loose. And you want to leave your master cylinder bolted up tight. That'll give you something to push against. So we got 
three lines. There's one, two, three that we have to take loose. So we're going to take those loose next. Okay, so now we move to the inside of the car. So we got to take this cover off. There's just a couple screws in the front and a clip in the back, and that will come down and slide out. So we're going to go ahead and take that piece out next, and then I'll show you what we have to take loose. Okay, with that down, you have your doorbell chime right here that you just unplug and pull those out, and then you can take this whole piece out of there. Okay, so next thing we got to do, we got this little clip. It's just a little spring clip on your brake pedal. Uh, let's see, right here. And then that will just, that's your rod will just pop off. And we have to take, there's two bolts. There's one back here and there's one up above for your vacuum booster. We have to take those loose in order to get the thing out. So that's what we're going to do next. Take those two nuts loose and we'll get it so it'll pop out. So next thing we need to do is take this. There's a plastic piece here. Now it's got these little clips. You just pop out these clips and work along it and pop the top off of there. And as you can see, there's just like rubber pieces holding this in there. And then there's three lines, one, two, three, that we have to take loose. Now I pop out my uh, vacuum for my vacuum booster, vacuum line. Uh, you can take the clamp loose or you can pop it out. You just kind of got to be careful either way that you don't, that's just plastic and uh, you don't want to break it. But then there'll just be a rubber piece in here and you can just pull this out. You can move it up out of the way somewhere and get it out of the way. But next thing we're going to do is we're going to take those three lines loose. Uh, take them completely apart. And we're going to move on from there. Okay, so now it's ready to come out. Now this, there's this plastic thing that runs across here. It's just got like one screw in there. Take that screw out and kind of wiggle this thing out of there. And then the vacuum booster, you should be able to move it up and around and get it out of there. So that's what we're going to try to do. You just take it all out together. Okay, so the whole thing's out. As you can see, that's how it's not too awful bad. And in case you haven't realized it yet, if you ever have to replace your vacuum booster, that you go through the same process. So we're going to unbolt our old master cylinder. We're going to bolt in our new one. And we're going to hook up our lines to it. And get it all together. And then we're going to wiggle it back in place just like we got it out. You may have to wiggle it around a little bit, but it comes out. So we're going to do that next. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to transfer our lines from the uh, old one to the new one. Now, what I do is I generally run them in until they're snug, but leave them so they'll move because it'll be easier to connect it back up. And once you get it in there, you, you can get to them to tighten them up. They're not too bad. But we're going to go ahead and move the lines over next. Just make sure to put the right line on the right place. And then we're going to wiggle it back inside where it was. Okay, so it's it's sitting in place. Uh, first thing you want to do is go ahead and, and bolt the uh, inside in. And you can see it just goes right back in there. So bolt up your vacuum booster by your brake pedal and you can go ahead and put the whole inside back together. And then we'll move out here and reassemble out here and then we'll get on to bleeding. Okay, so I got it all in there. So these lines are all started in and they're, you know, semi hand tight. And this rubber thing can be a little bit of a pain to get back in there. But the next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and tighten up my lines on my master cylinder. 
and then I'm gonna put the reservoir back in I'm gonna hook up the hoses my vacuum line vacuum booster line and all that stuff uh, and then what we're going to do is we're going to bleed out the master cylinder but that's why we're going to leave these cracked and so once we start bleeding it the, the brake fluid will come out here and we know that we got the master cylinder bled so at any rate we're going to tighten up the lines snap our reservoir back on and hook up our vacuum line and the other tube that goes to our reservoir now one thing I suggest, or if you use your reservoir over again, make sure it's clean. Uh, you know, you don't want to put any old dirt back in there. If it's not clean, you know, you could take it and use some brake cleaner and clean it out. And, you know, make sure it is clean. But, at any rate, we're going to go ahead and do that next. Okay. Okay, with the inside lines tightened up, see I put my hose back on here, got a little clamp. If you so have a clutch, you have to hook up your clutch uh, reservoir line. And put some brake fluid in it, fill it up, and then we're going to get inside and pump the brakes a few times and hopefully lead through the master cylinder. So if we do it right, we should see some fluid coming out of these lines here and that's what we want okay so there's a couple different ways you can go about this you can buy bleeder kits and what have you um, you know to help you bleed the brake system you pressurize it and there's a bunch of different DIY ways that I've heard of people doing it uh, then there's the old traditional method with two people you know one person pumps the brakes a couple times and somebody comes down here and opens a valve and lets any air or pressure out of it uh, fluid out of it and then closes it back up before they release the pedal then they release the pedal and they do it a couple more times now this actually fit down there is just like using it as a holder and they had a cap on it um, you can remove the wheels it makes it a little bit easier and I've also heard it doing gone both ways with people like to start in the back from the furthest away from the master cylinder which would be your passenger side rear and work the way forward I've always done it and that makes common sense to me um, you know start with the one closest to the master cylinder and push the air out you know towards the back so that's the way I do it both ways will work uh, but you have to make sure there's no air in there. If you bleed your brakes and you feel a spongy, not a solid brake, you know, then you know you still got air in it and you have to keep doing it. You know, take a minute to, um, I have tons of BMW videos for everything. We do time and chain guides on the suspension. You know, I've done just about everything for these cars and made a video of it. So be sure to subscribe and take a look at the other things. So, at any rate, we're going to work on this um, bleeding this with a two-person system and see if we can get the air out. And then I'll show you uh, how to bleed the clutch. The clutch is much easier to bleed than the uh, brake system. So anyway, we're going to do that next and then we'll move on. Okay, so it's all in there. Washed it all out. Um, this is the line I got them all I got my brakes all bled it's a little bit of effort but second person system almost foolproof uh, but anyway this is the line that goes down to your to your clutch if you have a standard transmission if you don't have standard you won't have this or it'll be capped off or something but it uses the same reservoir same fluid in for your brakes now the thing about it this is going downhill it goes into your master cylinder that is right on your clutch pedal and then it goes down to the slave cylinder which is bolted up to the transmission so this is very simple to bleed if you look down underneath the car and you see the uh, clutch slave cylinder you'll it pops out at you you can't miss it it's got a little bleeder valve on it 
if you open up the bleeder valve, the fluid will gravity drain down there. Um, it, it should just come out because you didn't empty the master cylinder or anything. I do have a video on how to replace the clutch in this car uh, it, and also a video on how to replace the slave cylinder. So subscribe and take a look at them if you're curious. But at any rate, if you do remove the slave cylinder and you get all the fluid out of it, when you put the new one in, sometimes you have to hit the clutch, you know, four or five, six times and just make sure your reservoir stays full of fluid and it will basically bleed itself. You just stick a pan underneath there, open up the valve, and it will drain through. Anyway, I hope this video helps you out. Like I say, we got tons of BMW videos. Um, you know, they're really helpful if you're a BMW owner like this. As older cars get like this, the more you're going to have to fix them yourself or you're going to pay big money to have somebody else fix them. So thank you for watching and you have a great day.